Hey everyone, welcome to the Lineage Podcast. I'm Jordan, I'm here with Wanson and Lewis, and we are today going to look at some context of scripture, commentary from scripture, and we'll take a look at their culture, our culture, see how it applies. Welcome, gentlemen. Glad to have you on the- it's Good uh, to be here. Good to be podcast. here on the pod. <laughs> so I was thinking that we could talk about the parable of the Good Samaritan. You know, this is one of the most famous parables for good reason. Yeah. The concepts have gotten into our everyday. You know, you see mm -hmm. hospitals and you see if someone stops and helps, they are a good Samaritan. All of that comes from Jesus's um, story here. So it's found in Luke chapter 10. The themes are compassion, responsibility, uh, sacrifice, and uh, an engagement. You know, your ability to not withhold your actions towards mm -hmm. another. The big picture is that um, there was a man that was on a, a journey from Jerusalem down to Jericho. Mm -hmm. He was set upon by thieves, beaten, mm -hmm. left half for dead. Mm -hmm. A priest came by, saw him, but moved away from him. A Levite, same thing. But mm -hmm. then a Samaritan came. And instead of moving away from the man, moves towards him. He picks him up, mm -hmm. binds his wounds, yeah. puts him on his own horse, brings him to an inn, takes care of him, leaves him with the innkeeper of that day and says, when I come back, I will repay you. And so this story of a man that helps when he doesn't have to, mm -hmm. that moves towards instead of away, has inspired social responsibility, has inspired the Christian ethic you know, for all of these years. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I think is important when you look at parables is the context. Mm -hmm. So for the past few weeks, I've been preaching on Sundays about parables. And this has kind of been a realization of mine, is that you don't fully get the parable or the spiritual story, unless you know the room right. that Jesus is speaking in mm -hmm. or the people that he's speaking to. Yep. Yeah. And so this parable is given in response to a lawyer mm -hmm. that stands up. You wanna, you wanna read yeah, through? Yeah, and let's read it together and stop if you if something kind of comes up that you think is interesting. So it says this in Luke, and behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test. Wait, so they're in the synagogue here? Like where, where are they right now? It doesn't say specifically, but it does say earlier in the chapter yeah. that Jesus was with his 72 disciples that he sent out yeah. that had uh, cast out demons and they came back blown away. Wow. They say that even the demons have, have to come under the authority of your name. Yeah. And then Jesus says, that's good, but it's even better that your name is known in wow. heaven, mm -hmm. written in the book of life. So wow. he pivots from a celebration of authority to what really matters is eternal life. Wow. Yeah. So. So in some format, it's a group of his, of his disciples, but a lawyer yeah. is in wow. the room. Yeah. So the Pharisees are present and yeah. the religious that, leaders like are present. Lawyer. Mm -hmm. So a lawyer would have been what we would view maybe a theologian yeah. of today or a scholar. Yeah. yeah. So we have pastors, priests, preachers, you know, but a theologian would be one that mm. studies the scripture to make sure it's being followed to. Mm. to yeah, like back then they were basing their law off of the word of God, right? right. So that would, that's probably why a lawyer would be with all these religious people. Exactly. Most likely. Interesting. Right. And that, cool. it was a theocracy. It was run, yeah. it was run by the word of God. You know, it was mm -hmm. under the word of God and of course under mm -hmm. the boot of Rome as well. So the lawyer here would have been like the authority. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I like what it says here too, to put him to the test. Right. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I feel yeah. Like that's such a lawyer thing to do. It's so <laughs> like, true. Like try to test him. Like I'm like, he's got the he's wrong so, intention. Like, cerebral and wordy that he wants to put Jesus to the test. I think it's pretty, pretty funny. That's yeah, and so he doesn't cool. want to hear. Yeah. He's not open. Yeah. You know, the state of your heart is everything when mm -hmm. you're approaching Jesus. It's right. everything. So here yeah. comes the lawyer with the right theology, mm -hmm. wrong heart. Wow. Yeah. Wrong approach. Wow. Now he's going to put Jesus to the test. How many mm -hmm. times yeah. did the Pharisees ask Jesus, the Bible says, seeking to trap mm -hmm. him? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the approach? It's so true. It's so true. He says, so he says, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Referencing back yeah. to Jesus saying, that's what really matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? He kind of like flips it back on him. How do you read it? Because he's a lawyer. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. what do you think, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> Uno reverse card on. Yeah. yeah. And Jesus answered, you shall love the Lord your God. No, no, the lawyer answered. And he answered, yeah, you're right. And the lawyer answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And so Jesus said to him, you've answered correctly. Do right, right. This. so that, that, those two verses are two verses that he's combined in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. yep. One, I believe in Deuteronomy, the other in Leviticus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he 
he cor- he correctly puts them together. Wow. The sum mm-hmm. total of the law is found yep. in these two verses. Interesting. Wow. If you get these and you properly mm-hmm. apply them in your life, right, right, you got it. Mm-hmm. And it boils down to like you. I'm sure you've seen it at you know many churches on the wall. Love God, love yeah. people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so Jesus says that's right. That's cool. This is so cool. And so then he goes, but desiring to justify himself, mm-hmm. the lawyer said to Jesus, "And who is my neighbor?" Right. And that's the question that kind of sets this whole thing off. Yeah, and look at his attitude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now he's testing God. Now he's trying to justify himself. Yeah, yeah. Trying to put Jesus in his place. Yeah. And and prop up his own place. Yeah. Right. I love that it makes it like so clear too. Like you don't have to read into what he's saying yeah. with the question. It, it line for line in the Bible it says, but he desiring to justify himself says this thing. Right. Mm-hmm. So right. very laid out, plain and clear. We can see what his intentions are yeah, versus yeah. trying to have to guess at it. Right. Versus from what he said and stuff like that. You don't have to infer anything. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's his very motivations clear. are clear. And his motivations so cool. aren't, 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 um, aren't that different than, than ours many times. Yeah. Right. Very human. Mm-hmm. We get, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We get caught in that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, approaching Jesus. Yeah. Trying mm-hmm. to prove we're right. Approaching yeah. scripture, trying to, trying to prove ourselves mm-hmm. right, yeah. justify what we did, what we didn't do, how mm-hmm. we did it, yeah. how we said it. And we know like you cannot read into scripture. You have to let scripture read into you. Yeah. So you can't cool. approach the Bible trying to get what you want out of it. Mm-hmm. You have to lay yourself at the feet of Jesus and say, you tell me right. mm-hmm. how to live, how to, how to act. But you could tell this man is convicted already. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, just by being in the presence of mm-hmm. Jesus, yeah. which it's in the presence of Jesus, there's conviction. Yeah. You can tell he knows which part of the law right. he feels yeah. he hasn't mm-hmm. lived up to. You know, all your heart, mind, soul, strength, he thought, I got that. Yeah, yeah. But he knows yeah. I haven't loved my neighbor as myself. Right. And this is when Jesus tells this parable mm-hmm. about this broken man. And I'm going to go so far as to say, this is a wild theory. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's, I don't know if it's <laughs> biblical, but it's a theory. I love it already. Part of me feels like, I wonder when Jesus tells mm-hmm. this story, if this lawyer yeah. was one of the priests or the Levites wow. that walked by this man. Mm. You know, because some people believe that this parable wasn't wasn't a parable like many of the others. Mm. Like it wasn't purely allegorical. Yeah. But it actually is more of a true story. Wow. wow. It takes place in a real place. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. From Jerusalem to Jericho. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, the pass of Adomim, it's a real yeah. pass. It's wow. a Roman road. That was wow. built and maintained by the Romans. Wow. You know, it mm-hmm. it was walked by everyone who yeah. would have been yeah. in this mm-hmm. room and heard this story. So cool. This was real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like why would he have given so such specific details? Exactly. Like mm-hmm. in parables, sometimes you'll say like a certain man or at right. a certain place or he mm-hmm. bought a field, but right. he's saying Jerusalem, Jericho, a right. priest. Yeah. Right. It's very definite. And you know? yeah, part true. of me wonders, and again, I'm not saying that this is true, but to me, it would be like a godlike thing is if Jesus is telling a story that everyone's getting a lot out of. Yeah. But the lawyer's story. <laughs> the <laughs> lawyer's like, oh, gulping hard. <laughs> this man is nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like a subtle rebuke to him. Yeah. I don't know if that's true. Wow. But you know, but to me, it feels so real. Yeah. yeah. The staying power of this story mm-hmm. has proven that it is anchored in a deep reality. Yeah. Deep into humanity. Yeah. Yeah. So true. Even that question, right? Like, who is my neighbor? Mm. Is that not something we are asking every mm-hmm. day? Like, mm-hmm. is that not something people struggle with? Like, who who is my friend? Who mm-hmm. who do I love? Like how we compartmentalize it almost. You right. know, like, what do you guys think about that? It's like, who am I morally responsible yeah, for? It yeah, kinda, it kind of reminds me of the story of Cain and Abel. Right. Like, and yeah, even yeah. in the Bible, you see it multiple times. In that story, you know, he said, am I my brother's keeper? Right. Right here, he's asking, who is my neighbor? Right. And even today, I feel like a lot of times, even culture says, like, just worry about yourself. Worry right. about you, your family, it's and that's so it, true. no one else. Yeah, me and mine. Uh, yeah, me and mine, and that's it. Um, and I think right, it's cool that Jesus is basically challenging challenging that right here. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, if you go to Cain and Abel, you, you can't go much further back than that. Yeah. yeah that's and to see that same ideology mm-hmm. echoed through Jesus's time to our time, telling God, yeah, like, we're not responsible for them. Right. You know, what are they to me? Yeah. Wow. It, it's 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 distancing. Yeah. You know, we, we see it with the parable of the prodigal son when he comes home and yeah. the elder brother says, "Your son." Right, right. He's not. He doesn't say my brother. Yeah. He says your son. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, you distance yourself. You're pushing people away. You're narrowing your mm-hmm. moral responsibility, yeah. which is the opposite of mm-hmm. God. Yeah. You know. So, so John, 
316, God comes for the whole world. Mm -hmm. Right. The whole world. God does the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Really, no one should be helped by God because we're all unrighteous and unworthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But God says, but here's grace. Yeah. For Mm -hmm. all. That's good. But law says, I I want less. Mm -hmm. Right. I want to help less. I want to be responsible for less. Who exactly, specifically, technically? I think it's cool too, because like a lot of times you think of these stories, you think of the past, and you can think, Um, like these people are so different than us. Right, yeah. But in reality, like it's coming down to the same motivations, the same questions um, that Mm. they struggle with, you know, the first sons, Cain and Abel, to these guys right here and 2,000 years later, us as well. Right. So true. Like we're not too different than them. These stories apply to them. They apply to us. Um, So keeping it relevant, like keeping in mind that they have the same motivations helps keep it relevant. Yeah. I mean, I I think that helps. So true. I think it's like even a real temptation, like Mm -hmm. that religious self-righteous, like, you know, if you've been a Christian for a while, that's a real temptation Mm -hmm. for that to try to get on you. Right. It's very human. I know the law. I know what I'm responsible for. And now I'm going to test. I'm going to test everybody. What Mm -hmm. other area, Lord, is there that maybe I could work on? (laughs) You know, it's like, it's such a prideful thing. Right. Mm -hmm. You got to approach with the right heart. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a, I think that's a a very good way to look at it. And I think the more you understand the ancient culture, Mm -hmm. if you understand the context, then it, it's automatically applicable. Yeah. Yeah. You understand the place. Yeah. You know, the, the, the land I've always, I always say that the land is a character in the Mm -hmm. Bible and the more you understand it, the more it makes sense of the Bible, you know, to understand these motivations, you begin to see yourself in the Bible and not just in David, you know, Mm -hmm. and not just in Gideon. Right. You got to see yourself say, you know what, like Mm -hmm. sometimes I want to justify myself too. Right. You know, and now the parable is not for them. It's for me. Yeah. Yeah. So the parable, as he's explaining it, this location and these um, things that he's saying, applies to them directly how about um like the characters involved how do how does that relate to the people in that room how does that relate to you know us today right he's speaking to a lawyer yeah Yeah. so he he says priest levite yeah these would have been um absolutely within his denomination Mm -hmm. maybe even his vocation yeah you know Mm -hmm. and and then he chooses samaritan again for the lawyer the yep. one that knows the law, knows the place we should be worshiping, yeah. mm-hmm. knows theology, has yeah. correct theology. Yeah. Even Jesus says, mm-hmm. yeah. you have right theology, yeah. wrong heart, yeah, he's but right theology. Mm-hmm. So when Jesus brings in the Samaritan mm-hmm. that's eventually going to rescue this man, yeah. Yeah. he brings in the arch enemy yeah. of the lawyer. He brings Joker to Batman. He brings in someone the lawyer would have hated and not just hated out of like a irrationality, yeah. right. but out of theological differences, mm-hmm. yeah. past hurts. Between mm-hmm. the Samaritans and the Jews, there was a history of violence, yeah. wow. anger. They had two completely different cultures. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That goes back all the way to when the Assyrians conquered Israel, took the 10 tribes into Assyria and brought, wow. brought Assyrian civilians in. They intermarried wow. with the Samaritans. Mm-hmm. Wow. And so they became... Um, to the Jews, a different form mm-hmm. of ethnicity, a different a dif- different yeah. ethnic group, yeah. and mm-hmm. they violated God's law by wow. intermarrying with the culture. Wow. And so, from that, mm-hmm. the Jews hated them. Wow. And then they then there was all these things they did against each other. So, when the Jews were rebuilding their temple, the Samaritans threw pigs into it mm-hmm. to make wow. it unclean. You yeah. had to stop the work. You had to bring purity in. Jeez. I mean, yeah. that's a that's like real animosity. It's a bold yeah. move. Yeah. But then the Jews burned mm-hmm. down their temple oh, wow. so in Mount both, both sides. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jeez. And 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 they believe that the temple should be in Mount Gerizim where yeah. the covenant was given by Joshua. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh and the Jews believe of course that it should be in Jerusalem. So that's when Jesus mm-hmm. when he meets the Samaritan woman, which mm-hmm. again is a shocking thing in that culture that Jesus would have gone to Samaria, yeah. mm-hmm. that he would have stopped at a well and spoken to any woman, yeah. Jewish yeah. or otherwise, but oh. a Samaritan woman so when the disciples saw this, they're saying, like, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Samaritan woman asks Jesus mm-hmm. which temple is the right one to worship at. Wow. It's a question of theology. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Jesus says to her, well, it is the temple in Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you, you do have the wrong theology. Mm-hmm. But now that I'm here, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter where you worship. It matters who you worship. Mm-hmm. So the true worship is going to be in spirit and in truth. That's good. You know, which is so cool that Jesus, yeah. he does correct her theology. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But far more, he he seeks to rescue the person, wow. reveal himself. Mm-hmm. Wow! You know, so there was so much animosity yeah, yeah, between yeah. these groups. You wow. remember James and John? They asked God oh, yeah. to allow them to call fire from yeah, heaven yeah, yeah. on Samaritans. Wow! That's how much they hated. So, so to the theologian, yeah, yeah to the lawyer, mm-hmm. when Jesus brings up the Samaritan yeah. as a good guy, yeah, yeah. it's shocking. 
yeah. don't know if it's the same comparison today, but when you talk about that, the first thing that comes to mind is um, kind of, you know, with everything happening on in that region of the world, like, would that be considered similar to what the relationship is between Jews and Palestinians or Muslims today? I, you know, I, I don't want to say definitively, yeah. mm -hmm. but I think that as you read through it, it would have probably had a similar guttural reaction. Yeah. Like, oh, no or way. Just catches yeah, yeah. That's an wow. enemy. Mm -hmm. In fact, when we went to, um, when we went to on the, yeah. one of our trips to Israel, mm -hmm. we wanted to visit Sychar, which is mm -hmm. the well. Yeah. Jacob's well is still there, mm -hmm. where so the woman cool. was at the well with Jesus, mm -hmm. and you're able to to visit it, the city of Nablus. But uh, in order to go, you have to go into the West Bank, yeah. which is uh, Palestinian, mm -hmm. and they had checkpoints. Yeah. I remember going through the bus with the checkpoint. You we had that? someone get onto the bus. Yep. Wow. Check us all out. Oh, yep. that happened once on our trip. Yep. Yep. That was very tense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's and and there's huge guard towers and huge fencing mm -hmm. and it has massive signs written in mm -hmm. every language yeah jews cannot enter here yep. you know I you cannot enter if you crazy. do you're at your own risk and all this wow. and and it was it was intense and i and that what mm -hmm. blew me away yeah. is that like wow the jews would mm -hmm. still go around samaria yeah yeah they still wouldn't go mm -hmm. through wow the west bank wouldn't go through mm -hmm. samaria so i'm not gonna say you know as an american absolutely that's what's happening mm -hmm. but it certainly has shades of yeah. it. Yeah. That there is deep animosity, past mm -hmm. hurts, past violence, wounds, Sheesh. different theology. Mm -hmm. And a Samaritan coming on the scene mm -hmm. would have shocked everyone in the room, including the disciples. Wow. Wow. They would have had an issue with the Samaritan as well. Wow. wow. And it's interesting. You would think the Samaritan mm -hmm. is going to make this situation go from bad to worse. Yeah. 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 That's that's like what their gut would have said. Like, oh, here's a Samaritan on the mm -hmm. way. Right. And he ends up being the good guy who comes and shows compassion. So, yeah, so Jesus says, but a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring oil and wine. Right. And then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper saying, Take care of him. Whatever more you spend, I'll repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be the neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? Jesus says to the lawyer now. Right. So so let's review. The first is a priest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he walks by, passes on the other side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, if you note that, like you said, it's mm -hmm. cool that the Bible tells us we don't have to infer. Mm -hmm. He moves away from the man. Yeah. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. physically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Moves away. Avoidance. Yeah, you can't wow. even get near him. No responsibility. Mm -hmm. Shifting your eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, if I don't see it, I'm not responsible for mm -hmm. it. He moves away. Mm -hmm. And there's always the temptation that we would even have. Yeah. Even if we're priests. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Martin Luther says every believer is a priest. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was thinking when I was reading this, I was thinking, you know, you're a priest even when you're outside the temple. Yeah. Yeah. Like it never stops. It never stops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yet this priest chooses not to serve the man that he would have served in the temple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go from Jerusalem down to Jericho, the priest lived in Jericho. Mm -hmm. So he's most likely coming from having served God for a whole month, you know, filled wow. filled with the spirit, so yep. to speak, yeah. you know, having just served. Mm -hmm. And now wow. here he's coming with an opportunity to serve outside the temple yeah. and he moves away from it. And, you know, before we would otherize him, yeah. why? Yeah, I was going to say, like, is yeah. that something that you can almost relate to? Like, almost like you spend yourself. Yeah. You know, you put all of your, you know, whether Such it's a good point. when you're preaching on something, I know yeah. it's a you know, very intense yeah. thing or... Um, you know, when we did events and stuff like that, Easter at the Dunk, um, you know, conference and stuff like that. Right. You can feel like, oh, I already put my all into this. All right, yeah. I did and it. And the Monday after, oh. you know what I mean? Or is that whole yeah, you want to turn it off, you know? Like, I'm and, done and, with this. Yeah. Or I want I need to recharge or something like that. You think maybe that For could sure. be like an aspect? For sure. Um, that he might have been going through? I think everybody could do it. I think more than just even leaders, people can mm -hmm. do it. I had a long day at work today. You know, you see somebody or yep. whatever with a flat tire. I mean, like how many of us have, have done that? It's mm -hmm. like you, you can easily justify um not being involved mm -hmm. you know moral responsibility you know not giving not giving help not giving time mm. i think it's a real temptation mm -hmm. for people a lot of times too when people come in to serve at the church maybe they may have an area of expertise where they could really help mm -hmm. but yeah. they say like oh i i, I don't want to do this for the church i did mm -hmm. it all week right i've right, given yeah, my all yeah. to yeah. work i'm not doing it at church yeah, yeah. it's like all right, you know, you yeah. can serve anywhere you want, but man, we could really use your help yeah. in this yeah. area. Yeah. You know, you so see true. that with preachers, of course you see yeah. it. Mm -hmm. By Sunday, I preach three times on a Sunday. By the time you're done, you mm -hmm. are done. Yeah. yeah. And you feel like I have served. Yeah. And you can justify yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's a there's justification. You can for justify it. yourself in anything. Mm -hmm. So that could have yeah. been one of the motivations. Wow. Mm -hmm. I remember one time I was at a 
youth conference with a bunch of pastors. It was late after the service. We were in a green room and there was a whole group of youth pastors there. And mm-hmm. we were kind of, you know, talking and from all over the country. And the guy that had preached, he, um, you know, everyone wanted to talk mm-hmm. to him, you know, mm-hmm. of course, you know, the, the kind of that culture. Not great, but, you know, everyone wanted, you know, his information, everyone wanted to connect and everything. We're walking out of, of the lobby afterwards and there's a kid in the corner that was kind of crying. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and every single pastor walked by this kid, wow. including myself. Yeah, you know, yeah. I walked right by. I'm not going to judge everybody. <laughs> just following suit here. Yeah, no, yeah. I just felt like, you know, like what? Yeah. Kids are always, youth, youth yeah. ministry, kids yeah, are always yeah, crying. Yeah, 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 they're always That's crying. Funny. Another crying The kid. last pastor was the one who spoke. Yeah. Wow. That Sunday. He noticed the kid. Wow. Everyone wants his attention. He turns, mm-hmm. kneels down, and he says, how are you doing? Mm-hmm. Why are wow. you crying? He said, I'll wow. never forget. He said, what's God doing right now? Yeah. You know? Wow. It was such a, a moment where I don't remember a lot of the pastors stopping and seeing him, but I mm-hmm. saw it. I yeah. saw the group walking, and I saw the mm-hmm. one pastor stopping. And in a moment, I saw a flash of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Wow. I don't know if this kid will remember it. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he does for Probably. the rest of his life. Mm-hmm. But I saw a flash of Jesus. I saw a good Samaritan. Mm-hmm. You know, And it didn't require all that much from the yeah, pastor, but right. he definitely mm-hmm. could have yeah. said, I just preached to thousands. Wow. I was yeah. just in, you know, ministering to a bunch of pastors. Mm-hmm. I was just at the altar. I'm done. Wow. But when he chose not to, and like go the extra mm-hmm. mile, mile, so to speak, I saw Jesus. Yeah. Wow. It's like how much more like Jesus can we be than to to, mm-hmm. to lay everything down, right? Yeah. Like that's who the Good Samaritan is. I mean, when you read the story, at least I get that sense, mm-hmm. like that's Christ. He is the Good Samaritan. Mm-hmm. But then he says, you go and do likewise. So mm-hmm. it's like he puts the responsibility on us, which I love that about the end, you guys. Mm-hmm. Like when you read the end, Jesus says, now which of these, you know, is the neighbor? And then the, the guy says, well, the one who showed him mercy. He can't mm-hmm. even say Samaritan. <laughs> which I think is so funny. That's true. He goes, the one who showed him mercy. That's what I'm saying. That's the yeah. that's how much they hated each other. You know, and then Jesus says to him, you go and do likewise. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's our responsibility. Yeah. What do you guys think? Well, Jesus said, who proved to be a neighbor? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the first question, the man said, who is my neighbor? Wow. Mm-hmm. That's self-referential. Yeah. You know, the, wow. the, the, the most important person there is self, who is mm-hmm. my. Yeah. But then Jesus says, who proved? Mm-hmm. He wow. turned it around. And I like what I like that it's not like babying him too. Like the man asked a question and Jesus isn't saying, All right, well, you have to do A, B, C. Here's your neighbor, A, B, C. Well, he flips it back at him. He doesn't really need Jesus to tell him what in his heart he probably already knows. Right. Yeah. He said, yeah. Who is my neighbor? Because yeah. he knew in his heart. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. really good. And that's true too. That, you know, you can try and justify yourself in whatever mm-hmm. method, mind, or, yeah. you know, actions or whatever. But in the end, I think you know. You know. I think yeah, like yeah, the yeah. Holy Spirit lets you know, um, and you don't need to be handheld. Like right. you know, Jesus didn't handheld him. Right. He didn't yeah, so lead true. him directly to the word answer. Right. He showed him a story, and um, the man figured knew in his heart. And right. He, he knew the answer by the end of the story. Mm. Wow. I wonder even if like you know he's talking like who's my neighbor. I wonder if it's like they're thinking proximity, like mm-hmm. my fellow Israelites, my village, my town, my people. Where Jesus is like, actually, it's a matter of who you're going to show mercy to. Yeah, it's, like that's your neighbor. Who's your you neighbor? decide. Y- your enemy. Your enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Who's your neighbor? Who you don't want it to be. Wow. Yeah. Cain. Who's 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 your neighbor? Your yeah. brother. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, it's it's uh, it's very challenging when Jesus gets yeah. involved. Seriously. So, what would the Levite be in this story? Like, oh, that's a good question. Relevancy wise, like, who was that kind of person in that culture? You know the Levites were the, were the were the worshipers. Mm-hmm. You know, so maybe something like the musicians. They would have yeah. prepared the temple for worship. Mm-hmm. Would they, you say maybe creative? They, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Modern day for sure. Yeah, yeah, and they would and or or uh, or you know if you call it like a, a you know a, a team member, mm-hmm. you know, a team, dream team, you know something like that. Yeah, like you know, servant. servant, servant leader. You know mm-hmm. what? Just when you said that, it almost reminds me. It almost shows you two different types of people. So a priest could be more logical. Mm. and worship leader can be more emotional. Mm, I like and that. And it's almost oh, like wow. two sides of the brain. So interesting. almost everyone's going to fall into one of these two categories. Well, I like that. Oh, that's really interesting. Um, and showing those two types of people in that story could basically make it relevant to almost everyone because almost everyone can relate with someone who's more, you know, A, logical or B, emotional, creative, wow. or somewhere in, in between. Yeah, so, or like even that. people who they could aspire to. Like, I mean, yeah. if you hear a priest... I, I would presume in that culture, mm-hmm. yeah. you aspire to that person, That's you respect elite. that person. And then a Levite mm-hmm. of that clan, God's mm-hmm. chosen, yeah. servant in the house. 
like that's someone you aspire to be like mm -hmm. no one then hearing you know from like what you're saying aspires to be a samaritan absolutely yeah. it's quite the opposite mm -hmm. right and yet this guy showing the example the guy who you wouldn't even look up to right so it's the action mm -hmm. not the title yeah you know, that jesus is looking for yeah. and that's why you know james can say faith without works is dead right yeah. right you know if any man claims to love god but hate his brother mm -hmm. yeah his religion and faith is worthless mm -hmm. like the bible and, and god wants to see it not just be a profession mm -hmm. he wants to see your heart and actions line up yeah. with your profession yeah and good and god is judging it yeah mm -hmm. he's watching and wow. he's judging and mm -hmm. so that's what even like if this was a real story yeah yeah that's Mm -hmm. You know, of course, it's as powerful if it's just an allegory, it's so powerful. Mm -hmm. But if it, if it was a real story, there's yeah. just another even level because it is a real story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is true in life that when you come upon the scene, you're either going to have the reaction of distance, move away, Levite, mm -hmm. avoid. Yeah. And maybe the Levite saw the priest not mm -hmm. stop. Yeah. Maybe the Levite knew the other people that went before him, the mm -hmm. priest, they didn't help. Yeah. So I'm justified in not helping. Yeah. Wow. Which is the diffusion of responsibility, yeah, which we yeah, see in our yeah. culture all the time. All the time. All the time. We see people in dire need. And yeah. what does everyone do? Pull out their phones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's, you know, that's that's not helping. Mm -hmm. Right. And sometimes people feel like, well, I'm not a professional. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not right. the expert. I'm not a first responder. Mm -hmm. I don't right. know what to do. You know, or they might even feel like if I get involved, mm -hmm. I might make it worse. Yeah. And maybe the Levi even felt like, like, um, like if someone else didn't help, maybe it's for mm -hmm. a reason. Right. You know, maybe wow. maybe the priest didn't go and help because the bandits are still around. Yeah. Right, right. Like and I don't want to put my himself. life in danger. Protect himself. Like a trap. Exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. almost kind of like, and maybe this is kind of even strange to say, but it's like, there's something about us as we're more innocent, as we're more like children where we care for other people and we want to help. Like I remember I was driving once and we passed by a homeless person and my daughter was like, hey, what's wrong with that person like what what's going on over there and then we explained to her she was homeless and she's like we we have to do something and she's a child it's yeah. like why mm -hmm. do we lose that as we get older what mm -hmm. happens that it's like we all of a sudden i question now well should i help should i get involved should i pull my phone out should mm -hmm. i jump into there i wonder what causes that in us sometimes that we begin to lose some of the compassion mm -hmm. of like a child mm -hmm. and jesus wants to restore it in us the mm -hmm. innocence the mm -hmm. compassion the love yeah. And yet we think maturity is watching for well, yourself. Well, he says the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. If you want it, you got to come like a child. Yeah, wow. exactly. There is something to that Samaritan saying, I'm going to approach mm -hmm. even if they're going to beat me up too. Right, mm -hmm. right. Even if it means I put my safety on the line. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. And then not just that, he puts his finances on the line. Wow. Yeah. You know, he he gives him two denarii and he mm -hmm. says, and whatever else you spend. I mean, think mm -hmm. about this promise. Yeah. Whatever else that's yeah, open-ended mm -hmm. for however long it takes, yeah. he says, I will return and I will repay. Wow. Well, mm -hmm. okay. Then that sounds like Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Jesus is the one that sees, is moved with compassion. Mm -hmm. He comes down wow. to the, the person that's broken, the the Adam, the Eve, the mm -hmm. you and the me. Yeah. He wraps us with, with wine, he wraps us with with his own clothes, right? Mm -hmm. wow. You know, clothed in Christ, yeah. and then gives wine, yeah. and he gives oil. Yeah. Oil is the presence, the yeah. the anointing, the Holy Spirit, and mm -hmm. wine is communion. It's his wow. blood. Very cool. Lifts us up out of the broken place. That's mm -hmm. a divine exchange. Mm -hmm. He enters into the earth. He takes our place. Yeah. He lifts us up out of the grave. That's yeah. a divine exchange. Out of the miry wow. pit. Puts us on his own animal. Wow. You know, mm -hmm. I think of the triumphal procession. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, he the triumphal procession, he comes up over into Jerusalem. This is almost wow. a reverse yeah. of that. Wow. And then he brings them to an inn. Wow. But an inn is a physical place of care. Yeah. 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 It's origin. Church? Origin, the <laughs> yeah, early church say, father yeah. says yeah. it's the church. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So you would be right in line with the, yeah. with the early church fathers. And mm -hmm. he says, cool. and the innkeeper, who yeah. he says, take care of them, mm -hmm. that's the leaders in the church. Wow. Mm -hmm. And Jesus promises, I'll return mm -hmm. and I'll repay. Wow. Very cool. But in the meantime, I think God's looking for some sacrifice from us. Yeah. Yeah, because it's almost like the innkeeper had to shell out his own cash exactly. or whatever, his own yep. uh, resources until he was repaid. Right. Yeah. So Absolutely right. That's a that's the sacrificial portion. And that's so the cool. opportunity the of today. Faith of his, yes. the promise. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yes, that's good. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good. It definitely is a picture of the church, that there's a mm -hmm. place that you can bring the wounded. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, there's a place you can bring people who are struggling, you know, family mm -hmm. members going through something, you can bring them to the church. I can't tell you how many times yeah. mm -hmm. you know, I've told people, maybe you meet them, you're like, oh, I'm going through this. 
hey, we've got a great church. Right. Come check it out. Right. The, the church is an inn right. for the mm-hmm. broken. Right. You know? And it's not, it's the, it's the inn, it's the inn for the in between. It's not heaven. Right. Mm-hmm. Like clearly it's not heaven. Right. Yeah. right. But it's not the roadside either. Yeah. Right. It is, Good. it's a place of rest and recovery mm-hmm. and hopefully health, mm-hmm. people to check in on you and right. care, you know, and, and there's really, there's really nothing like it. And when right. Jesus returns, he's mm-hmm. going to check the inn mm-hmm. yeah. to see if the people wow. he brought there are still yeah. being taken care of wow. there, which is a pretty incredible mm-hmm. wow. you know, insight. And, and with that being said, I want to hear everyone's insights. If you yeah. guys that are watching and you have some thoughts from this story, maybe it's mm-hmm. something we said or maybe something yeah. from your reading, maybe something that you heard, mm-hmm. we'd love to hear from you. I think the most important part of the story is the challenge at the end yeah. where Jesus says, now you go and do likewise. Jesus shows us what it looks like to rescue someone. And mm-hmm. I think we are all the one that needed to be rescued. Mm-hmm. But once we have come to the inn, recovered, mm-hmm. you know, um, been lifted up out of that sunken place, now God says, now on, on your path, you mm-hmm. act like the Samaritan. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think the challenge for us is to look for opportunities big and small because sometimes yep. it won't be gigantic, mm-hmm. you know, life or death. Right. But big and small, to act like Christ so awesome. acted to mm-hmm. us. Yeah. And that's, I think, the challenge of Jesus. And that's our call. That's good. That's awesome. And that's how we inherit eternal life. That answers the question. Man, it's good. It's so awesome. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for this episode of the Lineage Podcast. Again, we'd love to hear your thoughts. If you have any questions, uh, go ahead and put them in there. We'll try and answer them maybe on this podcast or on the Bite Size Bible Study uh, post as well. Mm -hmm. Love you. God bless.